Hi, this is Debbie Morgan, and you're listening to The Spirit of Now, where we talk to contemporary spiritual leaders and provocateurs such as Carl McCollman, our contemplative in residence here at ZG. And we've spoken many times before. So today we're going to have a very quick conversation to bring you into the fold of the mystics, monks, magicians, and druids workshop happening on Saturday, March 11th. So Carl, welcome back to The Spirit of Now. It's always a delight to chat with you, Devani. <laughs> um, so my first question is, you know, you are well known as a Christian author and retreat leader and expert on centering prayer. So people know that they can look to you for uh, wisdom and guidance and education on that. But this topic is a little more broad than that. So mm -hmm. tell us more about your background beyond the way people know you as a, a Christian writer. Well, I, for about six or seven years in, um, I don't know, late, from the late 90s to maybe the mid O's, I was very, doing a very deep dive into studying goddess and earth-centered spiritualities. And um, it was something that was of deep interest of mine. I, I continue to be interested in it. Um and I wrote several books on it. So you can still find them there. Some of them are still in print. You can find them on Amazon books with titles like Before You Cast a Spell or The Spirit of the Celtic Gods and Goddesses. So, you know, and it's funny, every now and then somebody will come to one of my retreats and they'll say, do, do you write books on witchcraft? And I'll say, well, I, I have in the past. Lately, most of my books are focused more on just mysticism and kind of a, a, a Christian or an inner spiritual sense. But um, but yeah, you know, I am interested in those other kinds of, you know, earth based, if you will, that's probably the best overall term earth based spiritualities. So, um, yeah, that's that's part of my story. And, you know, while I moved towards being more of a Christian centric teacher, it was not like there was some sort of big conversion where I, you know, went from the dark to the light. Um, <laughs> far from it. It was really more just kind of following my heart and and really coming from a place that is very important to me of recognition and respect of all, you know, wisdom traditions, whatever kind of cultural or or religious context they may have. Yeah. So um, yeah, Christianity is my home faith, but I remain very much interested in other traditions as well. So you are, are the perfect person to host this. And I'm so excited that we've got you to, to um, bring some other folks into the fold. Now, just to be safe, if, if I'm a Christian person and I'm listening to this, is, I'm, you know, am I going to get hit by a lightning bolt? Is it okay for me to show up for this workshop? What am I going to get out of it? And, and Carl, are you safe? <laughs> <laughs> well, I God hasn't hit me with a lightning bolt yet, so, <laughs> so I suppose that's a good sign. You know, this workshop is not about converting anybody to anything. That's that's not the intent. The intent is more just kind of a general sense of understanding and a general sense of appreciation of the breadth and diversity of, of different spiritual traditions. I'm not going to be asking people there will be obviously some inner work that I'll be encouraging people to do some meditation work, but I'm not going to ask anybody to do anything. I don't think that would violate anyone's conscience. And certainly everybody ultimately has to be in charge of their own, their own journey. Um, one of the things that I hope everybody will take away from this workshop is learning kind of the points of connection and the points of resonance between different spiritual traditions. So, um, you know, the, one of the things I've learned working within the Christian world is that there are many Christians who are very, very interested in, in other spiritual lineages, such as Buddhism, Hinduism, yoga, um, Zen, uh, Sufism, Kabbalah, you know, and so kind of falling in that, you know, then let's also look at some of maybe these more earth-based traditions as well. I also recognize that there are many people who they're in a, one tradition and that's what they want. They really aren't interested in other in other paths. And I respect that. And I would say, you know, if, if you look at the, the topic of this workshop and you say, ugh, that just isn't interesting to me at all, then you're, it's not going to hurt my feelings if you don't come. Okay. 
But many people will look at this workshop and say, wow, that sounds interesting. I would like to learn more. And I and to answer your question, yes, it's absolutely safe. I'm not going to ask you to change your your loyalties, your your commitments. If you're if you're committed to being a Christian, great. If you're committed to being a Wiccan, great. If you're committed to to learning more about Celtic spirituality, great. You know, whatever you're, you're, whatever you're anchored in, stay anchored in that. It's like the Dalai Lama. He says, if you're a Christian, be a Christian. If you're a Buddhist, be a Buddhist. And I respect that. Now, I also respect that sometimes people feel called to move from one tradition to another. And I, I think that's fine, too. You've got to be faithful to your own heart. But so right. this workshop is, is less about telling you what to believe and more about celebrating the many different ways that people have found meaning in their spirituality over over the centuries. Right, right. And just to echo that, I was uh, speaking to somebody earlier this morning about our organization in general. And, you know, what I was letting them know that our ethos is exactly what you said, stand where you are, where you're already grounded. But we have a lot to learn from other traditions, whether we take that on as a practice or a belief system in nothing bad happens from nourishing yourself with a broader range of topics. And I think this is a wonderful way to do that. And another thing I wanted to point out is oftentimes, particularly with the way social media looks these days, when we learn about something, we learn about it in the form of conflict, right? Here's what the Christians did. Uh, you know, here's what the, the Muslims have done. Here's Here's, you know, what these bad guys did against the other guys. And, you know, most of it's true. I'm not saying it's not true. But we don't spend as much time talking about evolution of faith systems and cultures and the integration of faith systems and cultures. And I think, you know, one of the things I presume you'll be talking about is uh, Bridget or Breed and how individual figures throughout history have been connected with multiple traditions mm -hmm. and are rich in that. And so... I'm excited about hearing you make the connections between those and show how traditions have grown concurrently and even together and integrated. The Christianity that we, many people in the US think of is as if uh, Jesus uh, landed from a spaceship in the 1950s and created Christianity, you know? Most Christians that I bump into don't know their own history. Yeah. Yeah, because and so much of it is connected with these other things that I I'm looking forward to hearing you talk about. Sure, sure. You know, and this let, let me say this is not a a history program. There's, certainly, there will be history will be a piece of what we do, but this is this is like a mini retreat. And so I'm hoping that you know we're we're going to listen to some music. We're going to look at some images. We'll do some meditation. Uh, we'll have some conversation. Obviously, I'll be bringing some content to share as well. But the purpose behind this is not just to stuff our heads with facts. To be perfectly honest, you know, if you're if you're handy with Google and Wikipedia, you know, you can learn. I know Wikipedia is not always <laughs> great, but I think somebody said once that Wikipedia is, you know, error for error, it's no worse than a print encyclopedia, because in Wikipedia, errors get fixed more quickly. So you know, so take take your poison. But the reality is, is that anybody with with a with a an interest can find you know can find the facts. So, you know, we're not going to be anti-facts, but we're going to balance learning history with the really interesting question was, what does all this mean for me here in the year 2023 as I seek to be more faithful to my soul and to living the kind of spiritual calling that I feel in my life? And so that's what I'm hoping people will take away from this is that appreciation that you've mentioned, kind of this appreciation for the broad picture, but then also you know, a nurturing of our own souls, recognizing that different people, I mean, you and I, Debony, we have different spiritualities. My wife and I have different spiritualities. That's okay. And to really yeah. begin with that kind of foundational recognition that, that spiritual diversity is not something to be afraid of. It's something to celebrate. And I'm hoping yeah. that, that in the time we spend together on March 11th, that we'll be able to do some of that celebrating. 
That's great. So, I mean, that's another thing to really plug here is not only uh, will you get educated by Mr. Carmel Coleman, but, you know, to have access to this interaction with one another as well, all of the other people that thought this workshop was going to be an interesting way to spend some time. So that's exciting. That's exciting to get that engagement going. So, Carl, can you give us just a little taste of what's an example of, of some of this uh, some of the connections or integrations or ways that these different kinds of threads come together? Well, I'm going to just pick up on the one you've already alluded to, you know, Bridget. Bridget is, there's a Saint Bridget who is a beloved figure in Irish Christianity. She is considered to be on a par with Saint pa Patrick. There are cathedrals and holy wells and neighborhood churches that are dedicated to her all across the breadth of Ireland. What a lot of people don't realize is that if you go dig a little deep and get into kind of pre-Christian Irish spirituality, you find out that one of the major goddesses in Irish paganism was the goddess Bridget. And mm -hmm. so it's like, did the Saint Bridget, was she named for the goddess Bridget? Was she maybe originally like before she became a Christian, because that's the story, you know, was, was, she, was she converted? Maybe she was a pagan priestess that converted to Christianity. Or what some scholars have even speculated, did the historical saint maybe not even exist? The goddess became understood as a saint as Ireland converted mm -hmm. from paganism to Christianity. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not going to I'm not going to give a definitive answer because, again, different scholars have different theories about this. But I think this is a wonderful example of how kind of the story of spirituality morphs over time, you know, that, right. that we have a different understanding. I mean, even look within Christianity, you, you know, you mentioned Christianity, you know, many, many people, two or three generations ago, their image of God was very patriarchal, very masculine, very much kind of the judge, the lawgiver, you know, almost a stern figure. It was a father knows best kind of a stern image of God. Right. To be honest with you, you know, you can still find that, but it's usually with the fundamentalists. Most of your mainstream Christians today have an understanding of God that is not just patriarchal. If anything, it's, you know, I love to say non-binary, a God that is both male yeah. and female, a God that is nurturing as well as maybe sustaining order, a God that, that, is in the forgiveness business as much as in the judging business. So, you know, and, and the reality is, is both of those images of God can be found in the Bible that can be found in the tradition. It's just that culturally, it's almost like, you know, communally, we need a different image of God today than we needed 75 or hundred years ago. That's not mm -hmm. a bad thing. That's actually a beautiful thing. I think it speaks to how society evolves. So our spirituality evolves in resonance with how we as, as human beings evolve. And so, um, you know, so we'll, we'll play with some of that as well. You know, once again, this is not a history lesson. This is not like reading a textbook with just a bunch of facts and figures, although we will look at facts and figures. But what I'm most interested in is drawing those stories of meaning as, yeah. as, we, as we reflect on some of the, again, the breadth of, of spiritual lineage and wisdom in, in the Western traditions. That sounds terrific. Well, Carl, we're going to call it uh, closed for the moment, but we'll talk some more on Saturday, March 11th, 2023 at our Zeitgeist headquarters. You can learn more about this at zgatl.org, Zeitgeist Atlanta zgatl.org and hopefully you can uh, register and join us for those of you that will not be local because this will be an in-person event as well as a hybrid event um, but if you would love to hear everything that Carl has to say but you're unable to make it at that time uh, a recording of the event will be available to you after but you do need to register so Carl thanks for the time today I am so looking forward to it and uh, I just can't wait to dig into all of the the juice we got going on yeah. with this it'll be fun all right we'll, we'll see you soon carl okay thanks